I know I look very boyish, but um, yeah, William Hartnell was my doctor, so I was uh, I was there from uh, '63 onwards, and uh, yeah, I loved it. I, I only now do people say this thing about the lines being fluffed and that. I, I wasn't aware of that at the time. I, I was in awe, and. Um, you know, I had plastic Daleks and I had the annuals with uh, William Hartnell on the front. The one when he's wearing the fabulous fur hat, which um, still exists, I understand. I was hoping it might be here today. But uh, if he hadn't worked, there wouldn't be a Doctor Who now. It was, I said there was a lot of responsibility. People talked about Eccleston's responsibility when it was brought back in 2005, but to actually start the project, if it had failed and if he'd not been good, it would have failed. Um, there would have been none of this, no Appreciation Society, no plaques, no Jodie Whittaker, nothing. So, uh, well, she would have existed, but not as the Doctor. So, yeah, it, he is without doubt one of the most important figures in Doctor Who history. And also, more importantly than that, I love him. I have tremendous affection for that Doctor, and I still watch it now. So, um, I'm really happy to be at the... Uh, the plaque party. <laughs> he was a joy to work with, of course, because I was, when I worked with him, I was very overawed because I'd seen him in every British film in the 30s and 40s that ever was. Um, and I got to work with him in the army game. Uh, he was a very um, uh, definite man. He, he had quite firm views on things. Um, and he was very, I was a young actor then, he was very helpful to me, he gave me quite a lot of advice about, uh, I think he was quite concerned about my status in things. He said, uh, um, in those days there was a casting director called Spot, a directory called Spotlight. You could either have a full page, a half page, a quarter page. And I had a half page. He said, we know that's no good at all, no, you must have a full page, then they'll see that you are, um, you know, you're really, serious about things and, uh, and he was also a very courteous man um, and I enjoyed working with him. I liked him very much and I was most impressed with the way he sort of led the brigade in that because it, it was a tough shoot. We had horses going through the studio and got on the work uh, but it worked and uh, a lot of it's due to the, the spirit that uh, he had. He he was just gung ho all the time. Amazing man. He was, you know, he was getting on then. As a doctor, um, a combination of him and, and that wonderful music at the beginning mm. used to frighten me and my children to death. You know? I loved it. I really loved it. I thought he was great. I had two favourite doctors, um, William Hartnell and Patrick Trout, who I actually didn't like to be with. So my memories are good. I also do the, uh, sometimes do the conventions and events, you know. And I went to a lovely place in Oxfordshire earlier on in the summer to do one of those. It was good. And when I met up with Wendy, the girl that was the uh, doctor's assistant, um, and I did it. You know. So it's very nice. It takes you back. Well, I only did one series of the Doctor with Phil Hartnell and I was a very young director at the time and he was fairly notorious for being short with young inexperienced directors when he was such a great actor but for some reason he seemed to let me off lightly we got on very well and then we actually came here to Ealing to film one of my favourite Doctor Who scenes because we were meant to be on this giant spaceship which included all the parts of the Earth and there was this dense jungle and Doctor Who arrives out of the TARDIS and there he is looking at an elephant. We had a real live elephant that we brought here to Ealing so I could shoot Doctor Who and the elephant. Um, um, I, d I didn't see much with him, with him off screen, as it were, and the schedules for those performances were pretty tight. We, we had to get as much as we could in the can in a very short time. So, um, but 
Uh, and he, he was a nervous performer by that time. And it, it's interesting because I always thought that he was older than he actually was because he, he was actually I think, still in his 50s when he was playing Doctor Who, but he, he came across even off stage as an older man. You know, I thought he was definitely senior to me. Um, but it was the thought that, uh, but interestingly, he had already started to find it difficult to learn his lines, uh, even in his 50s. And so he constantly needed help from the actors around him to, to feed him cues and make sure he got his own. And he was very angry with himself for doing that. I mean, he, was a, he was a professional actor, he should know his lines. But they didn't come. And, and of course, Doctor Who tended to have all sorts of complicated explanations of scientific things, and those were a bit difficult for him to handle too. But um, as I say, I think I, I, I got off lightly. There were no ructions on my episode. <laughs> And um, it, it is, of course, one of the few that still exists. Mm. Now, well, William was... Uh, I was a very young actor, of course, when I was in that. Um, it was my second television job. And um, William Hartnell was actually very kind to people who were learning. He wasn't so kind to the people who were supposed to know. <laughs> Good way of putting it. But, but then, and he himself was under enormous pressure. At the time as well, because uh, I think, I think well, we, you know, when, when we do the, I sometimes go off and do um, conventions where we talk about it a lot. And one of the things that surprises people is they, they've forgotten how new television was then. And that we were actors from the theatre and film and other media. And going into a television studio was quite a daunting experience with these three cameras. And for someone who's a bit older, uh, struggling to learn the lines, you know, and. Um, Carrying the whole show on his shoulders too, a lot of pressure. Um, he was amazing. He was amazing, and I always find him incredibly kind. He was never, he was never ever. Uh, I, never, I never even saw him be irascible, to be honest. Um, there were some people who said he was. And perhaps he was. Probably was. But not in my, not, not, not with the scenes I was in anyway. <laughs> he was a great guy. Yes, I don't have many really strong memories of, of William Hartnell as, as my as my grandfather. Not that I not that it would be very interesting, but I did visit the set of The Chase. Uh, I, think, I think 1964, um, and uh, I went on set and, 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 and saw my grandfather in action, and also went behind the scenes. But the thing that that, that uh, I remember most was seeing the the Frankenstein. Um, monster actor being made up and he was sitting there with this kind of a uh, square head being painted around and his, his and bolts were being put in his neck and I remember being fascinated by that but also a little bit kind of scared probably as well because I was about to fly so that's a that that's a distinct memory and when I've seen the chase um, it's such a it's such a wacky episode with kind of uh, all this 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 time jumping and things. It's uh, uh, really, really one of my favourites. And also the other episode from my grandfather that I really enjoyed was the Web Planet with uh, the Monoptera and the Zabi, which were fantastic. Uh, I really, I was really taken away by that. I think that was, that was one of my favourite episodes, The Web Planet, yeah. It was very variable, like all actors, up and down. But um, as a child, I remember him having me in hysterics because he used to play the fool and rush around and, and do silly things, and I just, just used to love it, you know. Um, but then I think, during the war, I remember he was invalided out of the army, and his whole, his whole skin erupted from allergy to And apparently, they, they realised later on that a lot of men had an allergic reaction to the um, to the khaki, to the khaki dye and the, and the cheap, cheap um, material. But, so I, I remember him in all sorts of different ways, you know, sometimes just having me in hysterics from his playing and all the rest of it was so good, acting and doing things. And then he was, he was upset at, at having this awful skin problem. And, um, and then and sort of getting back into the business, you know. Um, but, uh, 
My mother always stuck to him. Looked after him and all the rest of it. Um, so he was an up and down person. But he had everything. He had charm. He had you know, knowledge of all sorts of things. And you, and, and if you had a script, you'd look at it two or three times and that was it. He knew it. And that was one of the reasons he, he had to give up in the end because he found he couldn't learn anymore. You know, like a lot of people, they they lose the ability to just remember. But uh, he enjoyed doing Doctor Who. He loved it. And he loved the appreciation he got from kids. Um, and he, he went to some schools. And I can remember we, we were living in a small house then, just outside Tumbridge World in Montgomery. And um, he, he was asked to do a, a he came through the whole little village, the whole place where we live, and he had he had people following him all the time, you know, and they followed him, and it was just wonderful to see it. Um, and then he loved it, and he, 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 he sort of made the part, but he was quite he wanted to do the way he wanted to do the part the way he wanted to do it. And Verity was very good like that. She said, oh, you know, you, you, you do it as you can. And and that's that's and I think that's why it's so different because he he actually created the part. Oh, all right, there was lines and things to learn and all the rest of it, but um, but very often he would alter them to, to, to suit the personality of, of, the, of the person he created. Uh, I just remembered him as a, as, as a, as a good actor. Yeah. My main memory, I suppose. And, um, then he lived, he and my mother lived with us, with us my husband and I, um, for the last two or three, three or four years of his life when he was going down here. And that was sad. But um, it made him a, a rather passive sort of person then. But, but mainly, I just I just remember him as a, as a great personality, basically, I think. You know, and he enjoyed doing parts, putting his own slant on it. Some actors never lose their own personality when they're acting. Quite a lot. But he did, he would lose his personality to create the one that he thought was the part. <laughs> um, I think that's to the mark of a good actor. So. I would very much like to thank uh, Paul, Tony, and Dave Paul from the Doctor Who Appreciation Society for suggesting a plaque commemorating William Hartnell being placed on the, on the studio site. Um, I'd also like to thank the Carney family for coming along, who have been very supportive of this, um, especially since, sadly, Ealing Studios has no archive at all of the BBC years, believe it or not. So to have a tangible reminder of the first Doctor Who is really important, and it's an ongoing part of us to try and put our history back on the walls. So thank you again. I'm going to read out a little tribute from Peter Purvis, who sends his apologies. He was coming, sadly, he can't be with us today. But um, this is what Peter has to say. It is with a great deal of regret that I am unable to be in Ealing today for the historic blue plaque being unveiled remembering the great William Hartnell. And there is no one more deserving of this honour outside the studios where he did so much of his work. In total, Bill appeared in 70 films with leading roles on many occasions. He will forever be remembered for Brighton Rock and for the part that, he ensure, that ensured he became Doctor Who, the rugby league scout in this sporting life. For a lot of people, he was the bullying Sergeant Major in Carry On Sergeant and the Army Game on TV. But his iconic performance as the original Doctor Who is where his real legacy lies. The lasting appeal of Doctor Who today is because of what he and his original companions created back in 1963. The conventions and worldwide audiences for the show would never have taken place had it not been for the originality and quirkiness he brought to the original concept. The show the BBC did not really want was a huge success because of Bill's talent. I was lucky enough to work on 46 episodes of the show with Bill. I only learned a few years ago that he was the reason I got the part of Stephen. I'd been engaged to play the part of a hillbilly, Morton Dill, visiting New York, who gets embroiled in the chase with the Doctor and the Daleks at the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> yeah, Terry Nation wrote that. It was only a six minute long amusing cameo part. But what I had not realised was that Bill was rather distressed that his original companions and great friends 
William Russell and Jacqueline Hill had decided to leave the show and no replacement for them had been found. They were due to depart three weeks after the episode in which I was involved. Apparently the lovely Maureen O'Brien, who played Vicky, had said to him during our rehearsals that he should take a look at me as that replacement because we got on so well during the week. Maureen told me that it seemed like a weight had been lifted from his shoulders and he spoke to Verity Lambert and suggested she looked at my performance in both the producer's run and the ultimate recording. The rest is history and three weeks later in episode six of The Chase I was transformed from Morton Dill into Stephen Taylor. <laughs> Bill rather took me under his wing, as it were, and we became good friends for the duration of the year we worked together. I am forever grateful for his belief in me and the kindness he showed me working on that wonderful show. We filmed here at Ealing on several occasions for the little telly cine inserts into the show, and I have an equal affection for this place as I have for both Bill and the abandoned television centre. I know Bill was immensely proud of what he created, but he was such a perfectionist as an actor that he got a reputation for being rather curmudgeonly and bad-tempered. Nothing was further from the truth. He got angry with himself because he knew he was beginning to lose the ability to remember his lines. So his irritability was caused by his own failure to match his very high standards. I must say that he was always kind, amusing and pleasant to me. And I know Maureen felt the same. His well-known fluffs were quite endearing, and although we may laugh at his inability to pronounce King Agamemnon, for example, or to announce, I am not a dog, a god, it does not detract in any way from the consistently good and thoughtful performance he always gave. This plaque is the perfect way to remember a wonderful actor, Peter Perks. I love Jessica Carney, Bill's granddaughter, for the ceremonial unveiling. Um, thank you all for coming. How wonderful to see faces here, people who worked with him a long time ago. And it was part of my childhood, as some of you might know. I grew up, and my brother, Paul, we grew up with a grandfather who was Doctor Who. You couldn't really separate them because we were, I was. Uh, six when it started, so it was really the only grandfather I remembered. Um, it affected all the children in the country at that time, I think, because there were so few television channels. Um, it was rather wonderful, it was eccentric, it was scary, it was everything that you wanted from a television program. People talked about it the next day, everyone watched it, at least that's what, that's what it felt like. I can't really say any more about him than Peter did in that wonderful piece there. Um, he started out in theatre and comedy. He's, he was a real practical joker, and as my mother will attest, he loved to make people laugh. He did a lot of comedy to start with. He then some he did comedy in films when he started in films. And in fact, two of the foot that he was in um, the bells the Goose Steps Out, which was a Will Hay comedy, which was shot here, and The Bells Go Down, which was also shot here. So he did a lot of comedy with a lot of comedy actors, um, but then somehow got sucked into playing army sergeants, partly because there'd been a war and that's what he played, but... Yeah, and so many people had been in the army at some point. Um, and so he had, he had a career which really did span everything from comedy to serious stuff. Uh, he did a bit of song and dance when he was in theatre even. And I think what Peter said is true. He had a great attention to detail. He took it very seriously. Um, and in an era when perhaps naturalism wasn't the most usual performance style, he was always naturalistic which is why I think a lot of his performances stand up today, perhaps. Um, if you 
you look back to the 40s films and things like that. Um, anyway, I think you would be so thrilled, so overwhelmed at the thought of someone putting a blue plaque up for his work. I've said it many times before how thrilled he would be at the thought that Doctor Who is still successful to this day, has a fantastic following, and was in a way the first programme that had, sounds bad, but had merchandising because the fans were so excited and enthralled and enthusiastic about it. As a family, we saw the letters written to him from children, from school children, whole classes full of children wrote about Doctor Who and sent pictures of the TARDIS and everything else to do with it. It just captures everyone's imagination and clearly still means a lot to an awful lot of people. And this would have meant everything to him. And it is such a thrilling thing to unveil a plaque in his name. So thank you all very much for having something to do with it. commemorated is rather fantastic. You know, I think that's such a lovely thing. Um, so of course, it's great. It's a really lovely thing. The film industry and TV industry is so lively in this country now, and long may it be. And I'm pleased that he's still remembered by so many people and loved by new generations. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean we're all just honoured and, and, and we, we think it's amazing and, and it's so it's so touching that, that that William Hartley is remembered and that it's brilliant that, that Doctor Who has continued for so long but it's also brilliant the way the past from Doctor Who is not forgotten it, it seems to be always there and of course in a way I suppose out of all the the, the programs there are that Doctor Who should remember the past because it's about time travel. So it's kind of, um, uh, but it's rather lovely, and, 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 and we're all honoured. And, and my and my um, my mother is, is, is very touched that uh, we not is remembered in this way. Oh, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Because he didn't actually think that wasn't recognised as being wonderful at all. You know, um, uh, uh, never sort of hitting. Because he didn't work in America or anything. So that, yeah, I think it's <laughs> lovely to have that. I'm very, very pleased and very proud. I really am. Yeah.